Hello, everybody. Are you as sick of the car repair shop as I am now? This is uh, the Interbay Car Shop, and we've been working on pavement for the last few weeks. This is Burr Stewart, the layout owner, and I thought it was time we cleaned up from this construction project and moved on to something else more interesting. So let me just flip this around and like we've done before, and we'll stick it in the tripod and we'll clean up and put all these great engines back. Remember the the uh, the engines that I pulled out of the car repair shed? We'll we'll put them back in, but first we got to turn on the layout and get some power to it. I know you can't hear too well with the earphones. But here we are, and there's that switcher spooling up. Like I say, sorry you can't hear it better. Um, I've cleaned these tracks, so I'm not going to clean them again. As you may have seen on my other uh, videos um, and live streams, this section to the right was made with EVA foam from the craft shop. Uh, two thicknesses, the two two millimeter foam for in between the tie the uh, tracks, and then one millimeter for above the the ties and below the rail. And then this is uh, just woodland scenic ballast uh, uh, glued in. And we did take a couple of pan pastels with this makeup brush, and we dabbed on some. Uh, different colors to give it a little irregular pattern. But when we get to the other side, we can talk about that. Today, we're just going to start off on the left side once I get a throttle. And then we'll move to the right side and clean up the mess. I'm not sure. Uh, oh, there's my old throttle. You can see in the interim that Dave Finger has made a little progress on this time oil tank back here. We're going to be painting it pink in a little while. All right, so let's let's get organized. The first thing we can do here. Is, remember this container was over by the car repair shed. Now it, it blocks the track now, so I'm going to put it behind, which you can't really see from that camera angle, but I think it'll add a little coolness factor since they probably would have stored some stuff in that container. Now this is uh, Locomotive 126, so if we it's possible we have that in our memory already. If we do, we'll just run it in. There we go. Yeah, very nice. See the headlight and the rear light. I've got uh, F4 set up for the rear light. And this would be a reverse direction with the cab. So if we press go, we should get we should have a move motion. Okay, good. Now, th I haven't been down here for a week to clean tracks, so this will be a nice test to see how good the previous track cleaning was. It's not perfect. You know, in fact, it's terrible. That's interesting. It's possible that I did a little trimming up in here, but that means we're going to take our little uh, bright boy, so-called, and we'll scrape it a little bit more. That's the thing about gluing anything near the rails. Let's get that out of the way. I guess you just have to chalk this particular live stream up to just fooling around with trains. So if I if I take the bright boy like this and just run it over a little bit, what do you think the chances are it'll it'll just run right in there? Let's try it. 
I know you can't really you can't really hear that horn too well because I'm using the the earbuds. No, it's still not working. Isn't that interesting? I'll right, we'll have to look into that a little more. But that doesn't mean we can't keep putting away the mess that we created. All right. Boy, right, these are such smooth running engines. So as I've said before, this locomotive has no business being on a 1973 layout, but it's just so cool that I have to run it. Okay, we'll turn the headlights off and we'll shut that down and we'll go over and start up the next switcher. Now, I'm not gonna jiggle your vision. I'll just start the next switcher. It's number four. So I don't know if we have that in our memory or not, but if we don't, here, select 04. Now with NCE, 04 gives you the automatically the long address, which is very handy. And I can hear the horn already. So if I press zero for the front headlight or for the rear headlight, and this is another backing move. I hope you're seeing what I'm doing here. And we'll just bring that on in. And it's got some cars. So I guess what that means is we should put the cars on the MOW storage track, which is over this last track. Oh, no, not really. Wait a minute. That, that Northern Pacific, um, that Northern Pacific car uh, hopper is supposed to be in the car repair shop. So let's put it on the other track. This is not strictly a operations video, but hello. Oh, I have reverse for some reason. I don't know why I screwed that up. There we go. Or I also don't know why that's not coupled. All right, so we're gonna put the Northern Pacific in the car repair shed. So I'll flip this switch and we'll flip this switch so that it'll run in there. You with me so far? I'm not sure how far into the car repair shed to put this. I think I'll stick it under the now you notice that that hung up, that, that big maintenance away car has some very odd trucks on it. This is from a Walther's maintenance away kit. I'm just gonna uncouple it right there. And we'll see if we can do that with an uncoupling brush. Oh yeah, very nice. Forward and we have a little bell. You hear that at all? Now the, the maintenance away car, like I said, should go over on this track. Now if we horse around with this long enough, it'll be all put together. But uh, once we get this left side of the car repair shed, we'll go back and um, fix up the right side, which is a little bit more of a mess, but you'll see. We'll just get there in a couple minutes. I'm liking this so far. I didn't, I didn't like the track not working there, but uh, I can go back and scrape a little more of that ballast off. It's pretty close to being workable. And you can see that trip pin is very close to the pavement, which it normally would be. I'm sorry, you can't really hear that engine the way it should be heard. All right, so the maintenance of way car I've always kept on this track next to the car repair shed because on the prototype, they have a bunch of, well, a couple of big hooks 
and the cars for the crews to ride in that they use when there's a derailment out on the line. And this is where they store them on the 1973 Burlington Northern, which we're modeling here. They stored the big hooks here by the car repair shed on the north side so they could just run up to any incident that might happen. Now, the next question is, where do we want to store this locomotive? And I'm kind of thinking we should put it with the other uh, one for now, because we still have a couple of other locomotives to bring in uh, from farther out on the yard lead. We're going to end up with uh, four switch engines in here. And what I'm thinking about doing is using this area to store the switch engines for uh, inner bay uh, use because on the other side of the layout, I think you can see that over here, this is where the main engine terminal is. And we're keeping, um, we're using that for the mainline trains, for power for the mainline trains. So. Look how smooth these engines are. This is not like your grandfather's model railroading. This is really, really fantastic stuff. Okay, now we're gonna turn that headlight off. Can you see the headlight on your camera? There we go. And now we'll get the next switch engine. And I think we'll put it on the track that we put the hopper car on. That's another GN switcher, but it, it also has a, a maintenance of way car attached to it. And that's an odd situation. Oh, we'll put that with the, with the storage. Okay. Number 33. Number 33 is a new uh, I believe, you hear it? I don't know if you can hear it. I'll get near it. There we go. Number 33, I, I think, is a, a new um, Rapido switcher. And it's aligned the other direction. Here it comes. We're going to set up the headlights for it. And like I said, it's it's carrying uh, or pushing, shoving, I guess you would say, a, uh, a general service gondola full of some ties for the maintenance gang. And I normally would, in the old days, I would spot that here. Um, but I'm not sure that makes sense now if, if we're using this all for switchers. So what I'm going to do is put, oh, I know, I was going to, uh, let's, let's do that again. I hope you're enjoying all this switching. I know I am. Of course, I'm getting to run the throttle, so that's good too. So we're going to park the uh, uh, ties over this track. This this is a maintenance away storage track, and, and eventually we'll have the big hooks here too. Now that seems to have caught on the trip pin. I'm not positive about that. But anyway, this is why we do testing after we do a whoops construction project that was a little crude uncoupling that's the only trouble with the live stream is you can't take it back but that's all right okay whoops did i go not quite far enough there we go all right so all we're doing here is putting away this engine. Um, we're putting it away on this track with the 
Northern Pacific copper that we put away before. Let's see how it goes. I love those um, spark arresters on the top of it. They actually came with the Rapido switcher. So I just had to uh, cut off the... Now, why did that stall? I thought this was perfect. So that's speed step one. Look at that. Beautiful. I'm not going to hook up to the car because it might be blue flagged. Now, that's an idea. Let's blue flag it right now. Uh, there's a guy down in the Bay Area called Seth Newman that has the model railroad control systems. I think is the name of his company, MRCS. And he makes these cute little blue flag um, LEDs that you can put down on the track and they light up. Let's just see if this works. Yeah, look at that. So that's a blue flag on the NP hopper to make sure that this switch engine doesn't go run down the person working on the car inside the car repair shop. You with me? What do we have? We have seven people watching live. That's fun. Sorry, I'm not really monitoring comments if you're making comments. But the next thing is the final switcher to bring in, which is another SW1200. This time it's a, uh, it's a Walther's product, number 32. Now, it seems to me that in 1973, they would have renumbered these switchers to the Burlington Northern numbers. So one of these days, we'll get around to that. But for the moment, we're, here's the horn. You hear that? For the moment, we're going to put up with the GN numbers. So th these are the numbers that would have been there in the 50s and 60s. And like I said, I should change them to the BN numbers. And, and I will. And uh, if you're lucky enough, I may even uh, show you how I do it with a, a live stream. But not that you can't figure out how to change numbers on a locomotive, but I've been learning how to do it from Tim Taylor, who's one of the people that comes over here and helps with the layout. He's a, he's a, a decal or decal fanatic, among other things. Done a lot of good painting. So here we have two more cars, and I'm going to drop these two cars right here in the lead. Um, nah, nah, can't decide what to do. Maybe I'll just bring them in in the car repair shop because I have to rethink what I'm doing with this lead. Now that we have all these engines here, we need that lead. We can't be parking cars on it. It's the old story of there's never enough track for all the things you want to do. Now, look, that engine's going through just fine. This is a Walther's uh, recent SW. 12. Now, I put on the bell, and I'm going to stop it right here short of going into the car repair shop. And that's all the equipment that I have to bring in. So I'll go ahead and shut that engine down as well. If we press F8, that cuts down the engine noise. At least I think it does. Here we go. Okay, so we got all the equipment brought back into the car repair shed. And now we'll, we'll go over and work on the other side. If that's all right with you. This is the car repair shed. It needs to be painted white. We'll get to that eventually. Now, the other side also has a lot of equipment to be positioned. So I hope you're enjoying this today. We're basically just picking up the mess that we left after several sessions of construction. So I guess we want the same kind of view we had before, um, where you can see where the car repair shed is. I'm not sure that's the best angle. So let's try something more like that. 
Now, how's the focus? Looks pretty good. All right, so if we move the light over, that might help too. Just since we're videotaping. Okay, good. Thank you for the feedback. I um, appreciate it. A couple of people said they can see what we're doing. So now off the screen, I've got a little box and a fruit fruit originally came in this black a blueberry it's still blueberry season, but I'm going to be putting a bunch of this detritus, if you will, uh, into this box, but I'm not going to make you watch me do that other than to grab the stuff and explain what it is. So first of all, this is the two colors of pan pastel that I was using for um, um, creating a little bit more irregular color in this gravel area that we did. I think if you watched my video last week or two weeks ago, this is really useful for uh, just changing the color a little bit. Uh, you can go back and forth and you, you can either tap it. See, I just got some of that pan pastel on there. And you see how it, it leaves a little bit of a lighter color of gray? If we tap, sort of randomly tap this, it's not, it's not uh, careful art. It's just sort of generally applying these pan pastels. I'm not going to do any more of this um, so that we don't get too bored, but um, uh, we'll come back later and apply some of these. And I also like to use a brush. You can use a hard brush or a soft brush for applying. The, this is a gray, I mean, a, a darker color. And you can see that went on way too thick. But if you spread it around with your brush, you can kind of create a little bit of ir irregularity. What happened there? Where it, it kind of doesn't, it doesn't look all one uniform gray color. And you can do this very randomly and just make a mess with it. But eventually, it, it, the surface will be a, a less uniform color, which I think is a good thing. But right now, we're just kind of cleaning up. So one of the cool things about these pan pastels, which I think were stolen from um, the company that makes them used to make uh, makeup. Um, and then they realized they could sell stuff to model railroaders too. So look, they have a screw thread. So now I've got both of these screwed together and I won't lose them. I know they're a, they're a team for the pavement. So I'm just gonna put that off to the side in my little box off to the side. Here's another brush that's much softer. There's another approach. See how that puffed up when I did the, with a softer brush? I, I think this is really good for just feathering things out a little bit. But you do have to keep an eye on which brush you want to ruin and which brush you want to keep for good painting work. Because when you're when you're playing around with gravel and pastels, it's bad. Now, uh, for any of you that saw my earlier videos, you know um, what this is. is a couple of eyedroppers for uh, applying the uh, alcohol wetting agent and then the Elmer's glue diluted 50-50 or more. A lot of people say dilute it two to one with water or three to one. Now this is a, a piece of um, paper towel I used for wicking up the glue. Now, if you can see this, these are some little shreds of um, the EVA foam that I was using to put that gray against the rail. And I wanted to do that so that the, because I noticed when you're walking around in an area with uh, gravel like this, the rail is not a rust color like we like to make it. The rail is, it takes on the gravel color from the gravel. So just to, to be a little more clear about that, if you can see well enough, which you might be able to, if I go in here, if I just take this little thing and stab it against the track, against the, uh, the rail, I can get a, a color in there 
this pan pastel will just color the side of the rail a gray. I, I don't think this is the best tool. I think I should be using a brush. And maybe even a stiff brush like the one I had before. See, if I just put it right in there, that makes the rail gray, which it would be in a place where it was, uh, you know, uh, covered with gravel. And I know, you know, I know I've seen this effect um, you know, on the Ballard branch in, in Seattle. Um, if you if you walk around uh, the um, the different industries on the Ballard branch, you see that the rail is is more of a gray color than it is a a rail brown color. Now, of course, you know what the the, the downside of this is is that we're going to have to go back and clean the, the railhead before we try to run any engine in here. But that's okay. I've already done some of this with gray earlier because it looks really good. Okay, I'm going to, well, let me just do that guardrail there. Yeah, okay. Where's that other brush? I like the way this soft brush kind of got rid of the, the excesses and made some dust. Very nice. Very nice. Okay. Uh, we're not making too much progress cleaning up here. Now this is a garbage, uh, uh, garbage, uh, what do you call it? A container that goes on a truck. In fact, this is the truck it goes on. See that little hook? And you can see the truck can dump. I don't remember where I got this and it doesn't seem to want to dump right now. But I keep this garbage container in the yard to put little pieces that come off cars, because this is a car repair shop. So um, I just kind of keep it on there. And I have in the past run it up near near the car repair shed, like over here. Maybe I'll do that again now. We'll just kind of run it over here. And, uh, and we'll just park it over here by the door because that's very handy to have a place to put little details. Now, in this case, I have a couple of people um, set up next to, the, next to the door, like it's quitting time. And so at least that one person I'll stick there just to give us a little bit of scale. Can you see that? No. No, you can't see it. Sorry about that. I'll just move it back a little tiny bit. Now you can see that little person coming away from, from his job at the car repair shed. Cool. Okay, now, how's that? Um, Exacto knife, which should have a protective cover on it, but it doesn't, so we'll just pay attention. Now, as I said, this is the angled tweezers that I use for almost every job on the railroad. And of course, a, a fine screwdriver and a square file, which normally should be in my track work bin. I'll put it in there later. The indispensable NMRA standards gauge. This is another thing I tried doing pan pastel applications with, but I didn't find it. I don't know. I didn't. I didn't decide I wanted that. This is a white pencil. And we were using that to, if you remember earlier, we were using it to mark the EVA foam. Um, and we'll probably end up demonstrating that again later. Here's a pair of reading glasses we don't need right now. Now this is some oil that I use to lubricate the points, the switch points when I'm gluing ballast. This is a, uh, Atlas Conductal Lube. I don't know if that's the best thing to use or not, but I happen to have it. And this is an uncoupling pick we don't need. And some more uncoupling picks. You notice I've got some of these dental picks of different sizes. And I don't know what to tell you about them. They're, they're, it's sort of they work, as you saw earlier in this live stream, I was able to uncouple pretty well with it. But I still think a lot of us prefer the picks. Now, this is a, 
uh, 0 0.05 um, micron black marker. And I end up using those a lot. I don't know exactly what we did with it here. Now this is a, a famous uh, old MBC ore car like John Allen used to have on his layout. I have it set up here with a horn hook coupler on one end and a KD coupler on the other hand, just in case somebody shows up that wants to run a car with a horn hook coupler. Now these, as you know, are terrible. They should never have been invented and they only show up in you know, cheap train sets and so forth. But I'm gonna go ahead and for the moment, I'm just gonna put it into the car shop where I normally keep it um, for an emergency where I need a horn hook coupler. Uh, I'm not sure that's going to be its final resting place, but it'll it'll do for now. Like I could, I have a shelf up on top of the, uh, you know, near the ceiling. I could I could put it there. You know, that's a really a good idea. Why would I keep this here? We're going to, now that we have this paved, we're going to be using the uh, car repair shed for other things. So I'm going to take these workers out and they can be discussing the situation with the guy that just quit. And I'm going to take this car with its weights and I'm just going to put it up on the top of the ceiling. I don't know if you can see that. I'm going to tip the camera up for a second. The light is kind of blocking. But if you see up in the back by the beam here, I've got a shelf hanging near the ceiling because I'm pretty tall. And I'm just going to stick that car up there because there's no reason to have something like that for the occasional horn hook coupler constantly dirtying up the layout. At least that's what I think. Let me see if anybody's commenting on this. No. So... Now we got to get rid of this mess. So these are locomotive cars, cards, um, and they cover the locomotives that we have on this side of the layout uh, by the car repair shed. Now we already moved those. You saw us move number four, number 33. Uh, and so I'm going to put it down here. I'm going to put these, uh, in the bins. See, I've got bins here for the uh, tracks in the car repair shed. So the the numbering goes one, two, three. Can you see that? Yeah, from the closest to the main line to the farthest away. So uh, right now I've got number four on track one. I have number 33 on track two. And I'm not sure where these are. Oh, uh, well, <clears throat> they'll surface eventually. I'll go back to the other view. So I like to keep these little people in your view so you can see them. But um, these two engines, this 1922 is the GP9 that's right here in the yard. And we'll be moving that in a second. So I'm just going to put it. I'm going to put it here temporarily uh, in the bin just to keep. Actually, what I should be doing, it's funny how hard it is to be constantly making decisions about what makes sense. But I should really put these here because that way they're not in their resting place. They're just in play. And that's the best thing to do with something in play is just to keep it present. And you can see I've got these little plastic um I can't remember, J-strips, I think they're called. I also set up, uh, I routed out some uh, some little grooves here so I could just set it there. And actually, this is better in a way because it's lower. It doesn't obstruct our view of this gorgeous new pavement we just made. All right. Um, now we have some other stuff to figure out. The Sioux boxcar, where did that end up? Oh, it's down here. I don't know if you can see that far. Oh yeah, you can. Okay, so there's the Sioux box car. Here's a GN crane, which I think is down 
underneath at this point on the Lego Town level. Yeah, it's there. It's red. I'm going to put that car card down there with that. We have a PRR box car that was in the, sh the shop. And then we have some cabooses. So that's fine. What's fine about it? Well, we know what's supposed to happen here. Those are supposed to go into the car repair shed. And these cabooses are back there and they're supposed to go on the caboose track. So I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and put the caboose cards in the caboose car card box. And I'm going to take the track cleaning cleaner. What do we call that? Right boy. If I can find it. And we're going to clean the track up a little bit before we run trains again. What do we do with the bright boy? Oh, here we go. All right. So, you know, you know, we were just putting some pan pastels on here. So to run, to try to run trains on these tracks um, without cleaning them first seems like a bad idea. Live television or not. So we'll just go ahead and clean these rails with our bright boy. And I happen to have the vacuum cleaner right here so we can even vacuum up any grit that this might create. I didn't mean to block your view, but if you haven't done this, you'll notice that I'm I'm holding it up on the edge. And the reason for that is if I held it flat, which you might normally do with regular railroad track, it would just scrape along all, all of this pavement and make a mess. So I'm just I'm just going to and you can see there's a little gray stuff here coming from the pad pastels. Probably a really good idea to do this first. And who knows, even after doing this, we may have problems like we had on the other side. I assure you that the most important thing to do as a layout owner is to come back and fix any electrical problems that you discover when you're fooling around with the layout like we've been doing today. So even though I'll turn off the live stream fairly soon, you can be assured that I will be scraping down some of that gravel that we had the problem with on the other side. Now, on this area, I can just do it flat like you normally do. Here's another uncoupling stick. So we'll just do that. Now, this track over here is the caboose track. And I'm very excited to have paving right up to the rail because this way the, the crew is getting on and off cabooses or bringing supplies to them will we'll be able to uh, not trip on the railroad ties. They'll be able to just walk directly from the pavement onto their beautiful cabooses. And, you know, the, the whole point of modeling 1973 is not only the variety of the paint jobs and locomotives, but they were still definitely using cabooses on all the trains. But you knew that. All right. Now, I think this calls for running the Jeep. So let's try that. 1922. Let's see what happens. Can you see my growl here? Oh, very good. Now, I don't have that dialed in, so we'll just go ahead and select loco. We'll put in 1922. Enter. Ooh, that sounds good. Front headlight, rear headlight. And now we need to uncouple that from the train that it's, or the cut of cars that it's working. Yep, got the wrong hand there. So we'll uncouple that. And we'll see if it'll move in forward direction. Oh, look at that. Nice. Flip this switch. And we'll come out here. I'm sorry you can't hear well when I'm using earbuds. There's the bell. Can you hear that?
And we'll come back. Now, normally, why isn't that moving? And I'll have to check on that too. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is just push by hand these two box cars so that the engine can get around them. Because otherwise we have to waste all day figuring out what to do to get around these cars. Or we could have pulled them into the car repair shed with one of those switchers on the other side. I don't know why I didn't think of doing that. Possibly because they would have been on the wrong track. I want these two cars, these two box cars to be on track one because they're both actually um, damaged and they both need to be worked on before we can put them out on the road. Well, that's too bad. I lost everybody. What happened was I got an incoming phone call to my cell phone and it disconnected the live stream. I apologize terribly for that. And I know I lost most of you. Anyway, uh, we're almost done. I was just gonna take the locomotive that we had dropped the cabooses off with and I was going to put a blue flag on the caboose track so that nobody would pick up a caboose without checking first. And I think I could possibly put a blue flag on the car repair shed track too, if I could find another one. Well, I won't look for that right now. Uh, what else do we need to do today? Oh, I was going to show you one more cleanup item, which is to take these two cars that we just shoved in to the car repair shed and put them in the correct track, which is track one. And the engine is on the other side. If you look over there, you can see the engine is on the other side, track one. Very nice. And we've got the, basically the car repair shed put away. So I'm gonna take it out of the um, tripod, just give you an overview of what we just did. What we did was to put all the stuff that I had around the car repair shed back. So now we have the engines on the left and we have some cars being repaired on the right. We have the car cards back in their car card boxes. The cabooses are on the caboose track, ready to be hauled away for the next, when the next train needs to be made up. And this is the view from the south. And of course, when we need to pull a caboose, we can just remove this blue flag light, just take it off, and then we can go in there and switch the caboose. Pretty cool. If we look at the other side, just for completeness. We've, you can see I'm now storing a bunch of switch engines here. So if somebody comes and wants to work on Interbay Yard, which you can see is right next to the repair shop, they'll be able to pull a caboose out of here. I mentioned that there was normally a crane here and I think I won't do that today, but uh, I, down in Lego Town, I'm storing one of the cranes that I use. Oh, there it is. There it is. See that crane? So we might use that. It's not a big hook like they would have, but there's a Titchy uh, kit for a big hook that I haven't assembled yet, but I look forward to doing that one day. So why don't we just finish off by running that Jeep out of town here. And I don't actually mean out of town, I just mean, let's run it back to some place that makes sense, as if we we're rail fanning. Oh, that's interesting. Another area I need to clean up, I guess. That's a good way to end a, a nice model railroad live stream. 
picture of a Jeep in action. And just let it go off into the distance. And then I'll say this has been Burr Stewart with another live stream on building the Burlington Northern in 1973. I hope you enjoyed it. And, you know, keep checking with my channel. I'll eventually get back to doing some nice longer operations videos.